Hello, I'm Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. Now, before we begin our, our week in wrap up, we do want to share with you an exclusive free webinar Learn the Time, the Changes in the Stock Market with Market Internals this Tuesday, July 19th at 8 p.m. There is the link, michaelglass.com backslash webinar HTML. Free webinar, we're going to talk about all the market internals tick, UVOL, DVOL, advanced, decliners, TVOL, uh, VIX, all of them to help you time the stock market and make better trades. So as we begin to look at the price action for the week, we can see that all three major indices, the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, all ended the week lower this week. Uh, nine out of the ten major sectors fell at least 1%, uh, led by financials. We did have continued uh, debt concerns over in Europe. Moody downgraded the uh, debt for Ireland. Um, Italy is voting on their austerity cuts. So there's and there's obviously still concerns over what's going on in Greece. Stateside, uh, we have our third quarter of earnings kicking off here. Alcoa kicked it off on Monday by not uh, missing its estimates by one percent, but it posted better than expected revenues. J.P. Morgan and Citi both uh, beat expectations, but it happened on a down day, so they you know they didn't really see the, the reap the rewards. Google handily beat their expectations. I'm showing that all the money that they've been spending on all of these various avenues actually has worked out. And I think they said over a half million Android devices are activated every day. Now, I know people want to get into the Apple, iOS, and Android, to, and, and they're really apples and oranges. They're not the same thing uh, for two reasons. First of all, Android is an OS. It's an operating system, but they give it away for free. Apple iOS is not... Uh, it's given to once you buy an Apple product. Apple is a hardware company. Google is selling software, or they're giving away software for free. Secondly, uh, you, if you're going to talk about Android versus iOS, you have to include all, not just iPhones, but you got to include iPods, um, iPads, you know, everything to make it an even battle. Finally, uh, we had on Wednesday. Uh, ben Bernanke insinuated that yeah, maybe there will be a third round of quantitative easing. And then on Thursday, uh, he kind of pulled it back a little bit, so he kind of gave mixed messages. But it, I guess in the end, they're prepared to adjust their monetary policy per the uh, economic climate. Now, so when you look at what's coming up in this week, we have Apple, we have Goldman Sachs, Yahoo, and Intel. There's plenty more. We're, like as we said, we just kicked off earnings, and so um, uh, this is this is going to be another big week for earnings. And you'll see that because when we look at the economic events, there's really not much. Uh, Thursday's Philly Fed and leading indicators could be something, but perhaps the Apple on Tuesday and Goldman Sachs will be uh, be able to kick the week off. Let's pull up some charts and take a look. Okay, we are looking at the S&P 500 on a daily chart. And what we said uh, last weekend was here we are as close to our last swing high as possible. We have popped up above this swing high. But what's real interesting is as we drew this downturn line and see where the market is basing is on the back side of this downturn line. So if we're going to bounce back up. You would think this would probably be the place, and this 1300 price level 
probably going to be the place for this to bounce back up if it's going to do that. Now, what we also talked about last week was that we had multi-time frame agreement. All time frames were giving us a sell sign. And look what would happen. So that kind of pan out. We had our biggest down day, and then now we're just kind of consolidating. So as we continue to look at this, we can see on the daily that we've got MACD wanting to go lower. RSI is now in the middle, so it's not doing anything. So Cassis is already down. So our daily chart is mixed. There is support beneath us at 1300 and also at the reverse side, the back side of the downtrend line. As we zoom out to the weekly, we can see again that it was oversold and then we got a nice weekly sell off. Uh, hopefully we'll find support here again at the 1300 price level but you can also see there's a 20 and a 10 moving average in there also acting as support. Come down to our indicators and all of them are mixed even though we have uh, potentially up on Stokes, RSI is mixed in the middle of nowhere, uh, MACD is in the middle of nowhere also so our, our weekly for the S&P 500 is mixed. We got the daily mix, we got the weekly mix and now we'll go out to the monthly and our monthly I would still say is saying short. MACD is getting ready to roll over, Stochastic has already rolled over, RSI has already rolled over. So our longer time frame is still bearish, still saying short, while our shorter time frames, the weekly and the daily, are giving us mixed signals. Now we're going to go ahead and switch to our market leaders and see what they're telling us. First up is Apple. And look at Apple's daily chart. Beautiful. Just beautiful. We got the breakout. Um, and as the market, as if you remember, kind of drifted down, look at Apple breaking higher. Um, closing basically at, you know, the wick making an all-time new high. So Apple definitely is bullish. Now keep in mind, uh, Apple has earnings this week, so this could be an earnings run, and there may be some selling on the news, so don't get yourself too too caught up in this. But Apple, definitely bullish. Uh, let's go to Amazon. Amazon um, seems to be pulling back with the market. The interesting news this week out of Amazon is that Amazon is going to be doing a tablet. Who's not doing a tablet? <laughs> but Amazon is doing a tablet. Uh, to give better access to all of their apps and all of their products off off, uh, off of their website, so they're they're, they're going to be releasing a tablet. So, but Amazon did did pull back with the market. There should be support here at the past swing high here. We wick there. We got the twenty moving average there. So Amazon sideways, Apple up, Amazon sideways. Let's keep going on to Google. Well, this is just crazy. <laughs> You gotta keep in mind, Google closed at 529, 529-ish, and opened at 597. So you had like a 70-point gap, <laughs> 70 dollar gap. Anybody was lucky enough to catch that. And then if I zoom back out, you can see basically where I mean where we went. We were in this horrible downtrend, and just like that, Google um, is is now up out of all of this. It's now above the 200 moving average. It's now above the 500 moving average. And now you have to start looking at what's going on over here. And we'll grab our price line tool again. We have to look left and see what history has taught us. And we can see these wicks here. There's a wick. There's a wick. There's a wick. And it's just below where we currently are. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, 595 holds up as support. Look at that gap. <laughs> um, Google, you know, earnings, and that's all off earnings, so you can't even include Google, Google, Google in that. So Apple Bulls, Amazon Sideways, Google's out of its mind. Goldman Sachs, hold it, trying to hold on to this 130 support price level. Certainly pull back as the market pull back. Uh, Goldman Sachs breaks below this, and they have earnings this week that certainly can pull the market down, as the financial is 23% of the S&P 500. So... I'm going to give the sideways to down here for uh, Goldman Sachs. Um, Netflix. Netflix pulled back with the market. Uh, it will be interesting to see those of us 
who have been loyal Netflix fans have been exposed to their new pricing policy where they split it up. Right now you pay for unlimited, you get unlimited streaming, unlimited limited DVDs sent to your house, and now they separated $8 for unlimited streaming, $8 for the DVDs. They don't really have the greatest content uh, under streaming. They've got content, but it's not, you know, everything. And then, um, I believe streaming is, is because of the deal, uh, is a month behind everything else. So, um, that this that's an interesting pricing policy, and it's going to be interesting to see what that does to the stock. But, Definitely sideways. So we're we're seeing more sideways. Amazon sideways. Google sideways. I'm sorry. Goldman Sachs sideways. Netflix sideways. Apple's the only one bullish. And we'll end with uh, Priceline and Priceline sideways, pulling back a little bit, uh, possibly putting in a lower high. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what the market can do this week. The only catalyst we have are earnings, little economic data towards the end of the week. Uh, it's going to be interesting, but our, I would say our our leaders are saying sideways. The market was saying sideways. Remember, daily, weekly, mixed. And our leaders, for the most part, outside of Apple, are also saying mixed, possibly even down. Okay, so as we go to the dollar, you know that we've been watching this long-term two-year downtrend line and then this most recently uptrend line. And what you'll notice is that as we zoom in a little bit, that basically we are um, we've broken out of it, but we haven't broken out of it in a trend. Um, even if I take this and extend it up just a little bit, um, you can kind of see what I find more interesting. Is I'll zoom in one more time. Is if I pull up a price level, and to notice that obviously you see these wicks up here, and you probably could go somewhere in here and so it seems like right now the market is ranging not necessarily trending but the market is in a range and so you know the the stock market is an inverse relationship normally from the dollar so as the dollar is range bound mixed knows that the stock market is also mixed now what isn't mixed as the dollar is weak check out gold gold making new highs gold making new highs now you certainly you know, uh, I was reading something today, buying a, 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 a good idea at a great price is better than buying a so-so idea at a fantastic price. And so my point is, <laughs> you know, we, we also need to see a pullback here in gold. Um, you can see price consolidating for about three or five days in this 1580 to 1595. So this $15 range pretty much has been the last three days. So. Uh, congratulations for anybody who caught it, um, and uh, let's wait and see. And the reason why I say wait for a pullback is in the end, even if you miss this, it always pulls back. And, and if we zoom out, you, know, you can see we always get a Bible pullback. Finally, we'll go to uh, crude oil. And this is just getting back into the consolidating range mess that it was before. We were here for a mess. We had the strategic release. Now we're getting back into this mess. So um, I would stay out of oil for right now. As we uh, go into our education spotlight for today, we were talking about what separates winning traders and losing traders. And today we're talking about winning traders understand the playing field. And more importantly, they trade when their odds are in their favor. Consistent traders recognize that there's a time to be in the market and a time to be out. You know, as you prepare for the day, are you aware of the economic releases? Do you know when your the earnings are for whatever investment you're choosing? Do you know uh, if somebody's going to speak today that could change the playing field? Do you know if the playing field's closed for the day? Um, do you know where support and resistance? Where are the boundaries of the playing field? You have to know these things so that you're trading with the professionals, you're trading with the momentum, and not against it. You're not the salmon swimming upstream. As you know, they, they eventually they get up there, but wouldn't you rather be the waterfall coming down? So successful traders have that discernment to know, yes, I have a trading setup, but the playing field is closed and I'm going to pass. You know, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Move with Mike on uh, Twitter and YouTube. We have a page on Facebook, Are You Financially Literate? Talking about personal finance resources. 
Uh, you know, we've continued to offer this great free five-part video course on high probability trading, how to develop your own high probability trading setups, and hopefully that will help you realize the value of coaching. Uh, indicators, trading systems, even this video course will not change who you are as a trader. Coaching, where we work with you one-on-one -on -one and help you develop a personalized training plan that matches your investing goals with your risk tolerance, is how we can make you a better trader. We've got a great futures trading room for you, trading all the futures contract, uh, and they got a free trial. Uh, 20 free trades with our broker, intraday March, as low as $300. And finally, we got a charting package for you that works both on PCs and Mac that you can do all your scans to find the big women's stocks. And as we just said, it doesn't make a difference about your trading room, your trading indicators, or your system if you don't pull the trigger. And that's what we can do through our coaching program, our mentor program, is give you the psychological capital to pull the trigger to execute your trades, discipline, focus, day after day after day. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.